Hey y'all, welcome back to Mountain Murders Offbeat. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. It's midweek, Dylan. It's that time again. How you feeling? I feel great. How you doing? I'm doing great. You better pump up the jam, bro. We That's need, right. We need some high energy on this episode. Oh my gosh, let's bring it. Well, a bit of interesting true crime news out of our area. This um, surprises me, honestly. Brian Laundrie, the fiancé of Gabby Petito, the woman whose body was found one month after she was reported missing, is allegedly in North Carolina. So he, it sounds like he may be trying to make his escape along the Appalachian Trail. Well, rumors have spread across social media that Laundrie could be hiding all along the Appalachian Trail someplace. On Sunday, Lissa Chapman, daughter of Dwayne Dog the Bounty Hunter Chapman, took to Twitter asking for experienced hiking slash survivalists near the Appalachian Hiking Trail in North Carolina. She went on to ask followers to share Laundry's mugshot with residents living in North Carolina, urging hunters and residents to check their game cameras for possible sightings. So do you think she's asking for um, maybe possibly people to be like gods for their team that know the area? Um, that could be the case. That's very interesting. Officials from Watauga County and Avery County, uh, the very sheriff's offices there, um, say they have received about a half a dozen tips in just 48 hours. Ooh. A lot of folks saying that they've seen this guy. But let's be honest, Dylan, he kind of has... A very common look. I, I think that's a good way to say it. He does. He's not really, uh, um, doesn't have a very unique look. He, I wouldn't say he would stand out in a crowd, especially in this area, uh, especially in the hiking community or anything he like that. He blends in. He would blend in. He would know how to act. Well, and, if he is in the Boone, North Carolina <laughs> area, let's be honest, there are plenty of bearded, bald dudes walking around Boone. We saw some when we went to the Land of Oz. <laughs> we did. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you can see them in Boone and at uh, various REI locations across the U.S. And, uh, you know, honestly, the more I think about it, that might be a kind of a smart attempt on, on his part because people on the trail are kind of disconnected from everything that's going on. They definitely are. Well, authorities have been actively searching for the past two weeks in Florida, um, the Carlton Reserve, but they've had no luck finding him across social media rumors have been swirling with sightings across the country it seems like everybody and their brother has spotted this guy yeah they're so they're they're searching there in florida an area that the parents kind of led 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 them to that area or said he said he was going there and honestly i don't believe the parents at this point yeah i don't believe a damn thing out of those people's mouths i believe that their son's welfare is the only thing they're concerned with and i, I just honestly if it was my family member i could not get over the fact that you came back from across the country without your damn fiance and then she mysteriously has been murdered and now her now there's a uh, proof that she is dead and um, you, you, you don't want to commu um, cooperate with authorities. Well, it I could never enable my child in this way. No, I would be the first one to say, if you didn't do it, we're going to get this cleared up. And that was your fiance. And she lived with us as well. We care for her. And we're going to figure help authorities figure out what happened. Absolutely, Dylan. Oh, my God. Well, speaking of Appalachian Trail, it's... Fall, and during this uh, most beautiful time of year here in the mountains, we get a lot of visitors and tourists. <laughs> and uh, what what is your advice to said tourists and visitors? My advice is don't be an asshole. Oh, hot take. How is that a hot take? It's, it's not. It's just the truth. It's just basic manners. Like, don't be an asshole, okay? No matter where you go, if you're visiting uh, our beautiful uh, Great Smoky Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, or if you're going to the beach or going to a city, have some manners. So, Dylan, I've decided to compile a guide to not being an asshole tourist. I can't wait to hear this. I feel like it's going to be a really fun episode. 
And I feel like this is... And if this episode offends you, then that means you're probably an asshole. <laughs> and I was going to say, if, if, if you don't like this, then it's probably talking about you. Well, often people visit an area with no knowledge of the culture, customs, or practices. Okay. So this happens to us. We go and we get lost because we like to visit a lot of different areas. But uh, just uh, you got to still be polite, right? You may be visiting, but people live there. Regardless of where you're visiting, you have to keep in mind, this is not Disneyland. This is their home. Right. I think some people lose sight of that sometimes when they're traveling. Everyone's not on vacation. You know, some people are just trying to go to work, school, the grocery store, get home, live their normal lives. Locals are not in customer service, and they are not here to facilitate your vacation. (laughs) That's a great way to put it. Traffic laws apply to you, and there are expectations for civility and common sense. Okay, these seem rather basic, like things people should know at all times. So let's begin with first. You're a visitor. It is your privilege to vacation and be a tourist. Intrusive behavior, such as destroying or damaging the landscape, makes you an asshole. You recently had a friend who backcountry packs, right? Go- backcountry packs? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> goes way off the trail. What is it? <laughs> like back, like he goes backcountry and backpacks? He camps in the backcountry. Back yeah. Way off trail, way away from parking lots and crowds. And he was telling you, what was he telling you? That not only are people destroying the, uh, you know, general areas, trash overflowing, trash on the ground, masks everywhere, but now they're in the backcountry. He says there's masks all over the place. No one knows how to dig a cat hole, and so there's just poop and toilet paper everywhere. So it's inexperienced people, it sounds like, and that don't care about the area that they're visiting. Oh, or, they're leaving a trace. Or you wouldn't you wouldn't <laughs> trash it like that, right? No. Mo- and it's like a big example here in our area, Dylan, is Max Patch. Have you ever been to Max Patch? Oh, yes. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful area. Panoramic views, 360 views in the fall. Probably my favorite spot in the mountains. Oh, baby. It's so gorgeous. It is located along the Appalachian Trail and has seen an increase in foot traffic and camping to the point that the park had to close down the area for camping. Like, you are no longer allowed to camp there. I believe it's for a year until they can, like, reassess the situation. So, basically, it ruined it for everybody. Yeah, I mean, these people had no idea how to dispose of their trash properly. Like I said, they don't know how to dig a cat hole to take a shit. And if you can't pack out and leave no trace, then you have no business visiting the outdoors. See, that's what I don't get. It's it's like, it's not complicated. If you bring it in with you, take it out with you, right? Exactly. Or if it's something biodegradable, uh, dispose of it in a proper way that's not that's going to have the least impact on the ecosystem and animals. I mean, it's not it's not some unreasonable concept that you have to learn. It's just it's manners. If you don't know how to backcountry camp, don't do it and, and pack out and leave no trace. Then go to a KOA or whatever other family campground is around where you're going to have a shower and you're going to have trash receptacles and you're not going to have to be like responsible for yourself. Yeah. Right. It's it's the best thing to do. Yeah. So respecting the wilderness is important. Do not approach wild animals. And honestly, I am, I'm so tired of having this conversation with people. (laughs) Every time you go anywhere, there's wild animals and tourists. You see just the craziest stuff. We live in an area where there are elk. And they are beautiful, grand creatures. Right? These huge elk. And I respect the hell out of them, right? I'm not going to get close to these elk. Especially when it's like the rut mating season. And you hear them bugling and shit. And we will see tourists literally walking up like two feet away from an elk with a phone in their face trying to get a picture. An elk, a male elk in full rut, you know, pissing all over his own antlers, digging the ground up in like a 20 foot around area. I mean, big ruts in the ground. I mean, these creatures, I'm not sure how big they are, but they're majestic. They're hundreds of pounds. Really big. A big male's got to be 800. Six, seven feet tall. 900 pounds. With their racks and stuff sometimes. Yeah, we're talking racks a good four foot wide. 
I mean, these animals are huge. And I just can't imagine who would say think that you should go up uh, and mess with this animal. And honestly, I'm tired of hearing that bears are being euthanized for attacking tourists. Because you're literally in their habitat. So if you're camping in the backcountry and you don't know to, like, put your food away, to tie it up in a tree, like, away, away from your campsite, and then a bear attacks you, that's your own fucking fault. And that poor bear shouldn't get uh, punished for your stupidity. <laughs> so if you don't follow these uh, basic rules, to and it's for your protection because you really are, like you said, you're in the bear's habitat. You're way off trail. You're where the bears live at. And the bears are just an animal, and they're going to seek out food constantly every day, especially heading into winter, right? They're trying to fatten up for hibernation, and you're just asking for trouble. And then uh, and then are surprised when you have an encounter with a wild animal when they don't care if you're a person and you have a backpack or they're just trying to get your food, your your pack of food or whatever. Yeah, I mean, black bears are starting to come like down out of the mountains, we're being inundated on social media in our local news with folks who are having these bears up on their porch, on their property, whatever. But that's what you get when you build a home in their home, right? The bears were here first. And you're building a house on top of a mountain. Well, yeah, you're probably going to have a bear in your yard. Well, you can't get you can't get bitten by a shark if you don't swim in the ocean, right? I mean, it's not. It's yeah. not rocket science. <laughs> and honestly, some of these people that I see videos in like the uh, in like Yellowstone and in various parks where they're like getting up close and personal with these wild animals, I just hope for a mauling sometimes because <sighs> I feel like you get what you deserve, man. You're, I've got to if say, you're provoking a wild animal, it's going to attack you, and I hope it leaves a scar. Every time I've ever seen one, a video exactly like you're describing, someone in, in way too close, not you know giving the wild animal the respect they deserve for their own safety, and the animal does get a hold of them or maul them or run them over, I'm, I don't feel bad because, honestly, I think it's Darwinian theory at work. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Only the strong survive, Dylan. I think there's too many warning labels in our society nowadays. And honestly, I think it's uh it's it's not a good thing. We need some natural selection. Definitely. It would it would do our world some good. We gotta clean that gene pool up. <laughs> One of the things that we've mentioned previously on how to hike like a boss was to stay on the trail. Our search and rescue teams in this area are mostly volunteers, and they spend hours each season searching for idiots who get lost in the wilderness. So do everyone a favor and stay on the damn trail. And it's the same with waterfalls. Do not climb on that fucking waterfall trying to take a selfie, because the minute you plummet down and break a leg, some poor person is going to have to risk their life to come get your ass. Oh, my God. If you don't die first. That's true. From falling off of a waterfall. And I think you should have to, uh, honestly, you put yourself in a precarious situation and now you're in trouble and resources, county resources at the very least, are being spent for your benefit now. I think you should be charged for that. I agree. And might cut out some of the dumb shit. So over the past few years, I mean, there have been so many stories of, of people who are, you know, lost in the woods, whatever, hiking. But one that really sticks out in my mind, Dylan, was a few years ago, there was a couple, they were camping in DuPont State Forest, which is in Transylvania County, with friends, and they disappeared from the campsite. Okay. Right? And their friends were very worried, contacted law enforcement, they had people out searching. I mean, this went on for some days. Turns out this couple that was missing hitchhiked to Asheville and were out on the street busking for money. So they're okay. Yeah. Didn't tell their friends where what they were going to do. Nope. And so all this uh, all this fuss and expense for nothing. Like thousands of dollars spent to try to find this couple and they were like, "Well, we didn't know." Well, there you go. And it's like, "Okay, well, all this money is spent. You should have to pay for that." Well, there was a woman not long ago in California, people suspect she wasn't really missing. And they searched and searched and had this huge, you know, group and all these resources being uh, put into this one area. And then she just like pops up on the road in an area that had been searched 10 times. Like, oh, here I am. 
and people suspect that she was lying about being lost. Why? I don't Just know. Just for attention? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, when you live in a heavily touristy area, Dylan, traffic is a real problem. Uh, yes. And I have to say, for those of you who may not know, the left lane is for passing. And this is true on all interstates in our interstate system. No one's supposed to drive solely in the left lane unless you're passing the vehicle in front of you. There's also this nifty little thing called a blinker, and it works like magic, and it will indicate if you're turning right or left and uh, or merging, so you should try that out. And if your blinker doesn't work, then you should go to the auto parts and ask them if they can uh, recommend some good blinker fluid. Because, you know, uh, car manufacturers spent so much money figuring out if you let other drivers around you know your intentions of turning your metal machine, it just makes it so much easier for everyone. So the left lane is a passing lane, and it means that you can't drive slow as fuck in this lane. <laughs> oh, my God. So you, I think the, we need to make sure everyone knows the root cause of this episode of Mountain Murders, that you cannot go anywhere without running into all these things you're describing. You can't even go to the store. You can't drive to Asheville and back. And it's just, uh, everything's hectic and crazy. People are driving, uh, like, no self-awareness. Like and, race car drivers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then they'll, they'll do some crazy, dangerous maneuver to get two cars ahead of you, and then you're all sitting in the same fucking traffic. I know. It's like, oh, wow, you go to head two cars. Woo, big winner. I mean, what, are you going to get a fucking gold cookie when you get home? No. <laughs> okay, so here's an example, Dylan. Let's say there's a small street, right? And maybe you're dropping off your family at a restaurant or you're trying to get to an Airbnb and it's like kind of a small street, right? Maybe you're like in a city area or like a really small town. Do not block the road to unload your bags or your brood. Ooh. I cannot stand when someone pulls up to the curb and they let out like 14 members of their family from their big-ass SUV, and blocks everybody behind them for like 30 minutes. Because then it's like they have to have a conversation, and then the kids are running around, and then somebody's like forgot something in the back seat, and they got to climb back in there. Oh, my God. It drives me crazy. It's a family of assholes. I mean, you are not entitled to premium parking. So by, by sitting there for 30 minutes while somebody else is maybe going to move so you can get that parking space, don't do it. Well, as a, a, a dad who had searched for the perfect parking spot for a big chunk of my life, I would never do that move because that's very rude. Right. So park away because you and your family, I mean, let's be honest, you probably need to get some walking in anyway. <laughs> if you're visiting the South in particular or a small town, do not under any condition honk your horn at the car in front of you for not moving fast enough. That, that that one right there burns me up. Now, we enjoy a slow pace of life in small towns, and that's probably one of the reasons why you wanted to visit the area, right? A slower pace of life. So if you want to drive aggressively like you're in Atlanta or L.A., then go back there. Well, it's true. I've had people do this. Like It's like we're on the drag line or the start line at a drag strip. Like milliseconds, like a half, a, maybe one second. I didn't just gun it as soon as the light turns green and they're honking at me. And that's the quickest way to get the double finger from me. That's the quickest way for me to not move the fuck on. I've done that before. Yeah. Well, if you see old timers on a tractor or maybe neighbors who have their windows rolled down and they might be chatting across the road at each other, get your shit together. It's our home. And if we want to say hello, we will. You know, as, as people with uh, about tractors, these farmers are not out there burning diesel fuel just to ride their tractor around on the fucking road, okay? And tractors don't do 50 miles an hour. They are moving from field to field. They help each other. This is a work. I'm a working man or woman who has a job to do that actually helps grow food and put food literally uh, puts food on the table. So just, you know, calm down. You're not that important, and the world's not going to fall apart if it takes you an extra 15 minutes to get there. Yeah, and you know what? If you are somewhat, If you're in a hurry to get someplace, maybe you should have left earlier. Oh, shit. Right? Your poor planning is not my problem. <laughs> or anyone else's. 
How about this one, Dylan? Taking up an entire sidewalk, walking side by side. We've talked about this before here on Mountain Murders. I think people know this is one of your pet peeves. I cannot stand it. It drives me crazy. It is almost as bad as the small talk with the um, cashier when you have a big line and you keep on even after you made your purchase. Just fucking leave. Nobody cares. But this is just, this is one of the worst examples of self-importance and and no self-awareness. And assholery. Yes, because you are basically saying, me and my group of whoever, family, friends, are more important than you, and we have a more of a right to be here. Try a single file line. You probably learned how to make one when you was in kindergarten. Okay? <laughs> Not everyone should have to move so your family of eight can walk together. Shoulder to shoulder. Also, when you or your mongrel kids bump into somebody, excuse me or pardon me is is, is great, right? So get some fucking manners in general. Yes, um, acting like the person that you slammed into is an asshole is not a good reaction, right? No! It's the worst reaction. It, it, it really gets under my skin, and I know I'm not the only one. No, and some people may hear this episode and be like, oh, God, you know, get over it, people. I don't care. Yeah, but, you get over it. Don't listen to my podcast. But, Fuck you. How's that? Oh, my gosh. She's worked up today, <laughs> folks. No, but see, here's the thing. It's not like we never go to another area and visit. And we do make mistakes on the road. We don't know where the hell we're going trying to listen to Siri send us in circles or whatever. But the point is, we're not assholes about it. We don't, it's, and we don't expect everyone around us to change to our exact liking, right? Dude, okay. We went out of town this past weekend, right? We went to the Land of Oz. I'm walking into a building where there are restrooms. I open the door. There is a group of older people, like my parents' age, walking out of the building. Not a single one of them said thank you for me opening the door for them. Just walk right out. Nobody acknowledged you. No one at least gave you a, a the the clenched smile and head nod. Nothing. No, it was like I was supposed to be there opening the door for them. Okay. So next time I'm just going to fucking slam the door on them. That's when I let the, let the um, door slam into somebody's hip. Yeah. yeah and we get I'm, a new hip. I'm going to start doing that next okay. time. Okay. Then I go in the bathroom and it's like a bunch of, you know, adults and then a bunch of children, which is fine. But they're all running around. The kids are running around, being really loud, obnoxious, you know, whatever. And I'm like, everybody's paying for the experience. So, like, maybe don't let your kid run around a crowded bathroom screaming. Like, tell them to get in the corner and get still or something, right? Now, see, here's the thing. and we Bumping into you. Nobody says, excuse me. I mean, it's just, what the fuck is wrong with people? We raised, we both have have kids of our own. It's not like we don't have any kids. And uh, I think even people without kids could know that this is basic manners. Um, just, I don't want to raise your kids with you, right? And so if your kids are running around acting the way you're describing, you already have some mongrel-ass kids. There's no other way to describe it, right? They don't listen. They do what they want. You're actually just a lazy parent. Right, you don't want to be on top of them and all that, and we can see all this. But I, I'm here to have an experience as well, be it eating the grocery store or visiting a place like this. It's fifty, sixty, seventy dollars a ticket. Um, just control your kids, and you know whatever happened to when your kid freaks the fuck out, like getting up with your kid and going outside. Because that that's used, what I always did that, when that, my I, kids were little and were having some sort of meltdown or crisis. I always did that. It seems like you saw that a lot more often back in the day. But now people act like I'm just supposed to be here with your experience. I'm just supposed to have this experience with you. Like, you know, I'm coming out having this nice meal. Who knows how often I do? Who knows what my finances are? I might not be able to afford to eat out very often. This could be a very special moment. It could be a date with my wife. We haven't been out in a long time. It could be anything. Our anniversary. And all of a sudden. Maybe my daddy just died. If you have to take a bag of toys and video games and iPads and all this shit in a restaurant to try to occupy your insane fucking kids for 30 or 40 minutes so you can eat right quick, 
Maybe you shouldn't bring them out in public. Or maybe you need to like go back and reassess the situation that maybe there's something wrong with your parenting because, I mean, come on. I get that kids have temper tantrum. There's a difference, Dylan. When you're in public and someone's child is like having a temper tantrum or a meltdown, hey, we've all been there, right? We've all seen the screaming toddler. We've all, all parents have had this experience. And most of us want to crawl under a rock when this is happening. Oh, it's horrible. And you can see that, that fear and humiliation and like shame in a parent's eye when they're like, oh, and they're trying really hard to get their kid to calm down. Now that's one thing, but it is another for your kid to be running circles around the restaurant, screaming at the top of their lungs, bumping into the servers, knocking drinks out of people's hands, whatever, while you sit there and ignore them. That's a that's a completely different story. Like your kid, if they cannot sit at the table and and be somewhat still, right? And <laughs> eat a meal meal <laughs> and not be hollering like they're in a damn barn, then you don't need to bring them out. Now, I must point out, we were talking about some rather extreme behavior that we've uh, experienced together going out in public. We just we, experienced it this weekend. <laughs> we're, we're not saying parents with kids shouldn't go anywhere or, you know, kids got to sit there and be perfectly quiet. No, we're not saying any of that. We're not. But everyone knows that the kind of people we're describing. And when I think you're intruding on other people's experience and stuff, it's A, it's fucking rude. And it's just... Um, you're just an asshole. Be you're an asshole. You have no self-awareness and you have no manners. And that makes me want to punch you in the face. You know what I do? Okay. When, okay if I hold, this happens. If I hold the door for someone and they walk out and they're not just at least, you know, some eye contact, anything, like I, like you said, like I'm supposed to hold the door for you, I always be like, you fucking asshole. Or I'd be like, fucking, co-. okay, if it's a guy, I, I say fucking cocksucker under my breath, sometimes a little louder, depending on how big a dick they were. And if it's a woman, I, I say, fucking bitch, I'm sorry. You know, maybe that's I should get a new term for the women. But uh, I always, because it pisses me off. The worst is when you hold the door for someone, Dylan, and like they're walking out and you're opening the door for them. But then someone comes up behind you and walks in front of you while you still hold the damn door for like, they're, I'm not holding the door for you. Well, unless you acknowledge them and say, go ahead. <sighs> okay, there's an etiquette there. There, there, there are Again, rules. Again, I think people just don't even have that anymore. <laughs> and yes, oh. you might be in a new place, but when you're walking with like your eight or ten across, right, and then you just suddenly stop on the sidewalk, that's a no-no because people can fall, they can bump into you. I mean, you can seriously cause an accident. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just tough. So like if you're going to check your phone look at a map, whatever, move to the side and out of the way. You're it's also, a magic trick. It's like, bloop, bloop, move to the side. You're also describing the group of people who come out of a business or a restaurant and stand directly in front of the entrance, blocking the entrance of other people coming in and out, having some lame-ass conversation that nobody and but the, them And cares it's like about. The, the patriarch of the family, the dad yes. or whatever, he's always got like the toothpick in his mouth. That's because he just paid for everyone's meal. Yeah. Right. He's got like a toothpick and he's standing there like playing with a toothpick in his mouth while he's like, you know, picking his teeth and he's like talking about NASCAR or whatever. He's rubbing his dad, he's rubbing his belly, talking that, about how stuffed he is. That round of golf he played earlier. Yeah. And so these here these people yeah. stand blocking the entire entrance and sidewalk typically. And then when you like walk, step around and like weave through them, like what the fuck are you doing? They, this is the, this is the true sign of an asshole tourist. They look at you like you're the asshole, right? Yep. If they, they cut you off and do some crazy shit on the road and you're like, what the hell? Throw your hands up or something. They get mad at you like you're the one who did them something wrong. And that's the worst. Absolutely. Um, how do we... How do, okay, do you so have more for us? Of course I do. Look, look, this is a bitch session and I'm just getting it all out, right? Yeah, we're venting right now. And I think our listeners, some of you feel the same way. I I'm, know because some of you have indicated that you absolutely share these thoughts and feelings. I know that um, more people than not feel have feel, had these experiences. And I know Karen, our Discord fam, lives over there in Pigeon Forge. Oh, no. Gatlinburg which, area, that's very tourist. I lived there when I was... Um, very rather young around that area in different places, but I know exactly what it was back then, and it's only gotten worse. So yes, I think people can uh, typically relate to what you're describing. So give us more jaywalking. 
Oh, fuck. So walk when you're told to walk and wait for the signal, even if you don't see any cars in sight. But just jaywalking like you own the road, especially when it's a traffic situation and there are cars trying to pass and that walk sign turns red and you still got 30 people trying to, oh, I'm sorry, cross the sidewalk or the, the pedestrian walk. That really bugs me. So you're, you're describing the pedestrian who has heard this pedestrian basically has the right of way or is always right. It's like the customer's always right kind of thing in their head. And they will actually walk into an intersection looking at their phone or looking not at traffic and literally just never miss a beat. Or they stare or they make the eye contact and they stare at you and then they, they it's just like walk they walk as slow as possible. Yeah. Like they're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Downtown Asheville at Pack Square by the old Vance Monument, which now I think has been removed, that is the worst area. People jaywalk there all the time. She's and and I just want to gun it and run them down. You want to run mow them down with your vehicle? I do. Okay. Yeah. Don't cut in line. Okay, I don't care where you're from, and I don't care where you're visiting, I, period. I don't care if you're at home in your hometown. Do not cut in line. Line cutters bring out the monster in me. And if you are having a problem and there's a line, get in line and wait your turn. That's right. Right? There is literally no excuse for you to storm in and demand a, a, an employee's attention. No. No, I will actually speak I out. I see this at gas stations. And I know you had an experience with a tourist in a gas station locally. Yeah, so I pull up and uh, the guy's out there. He's, guys, he's, he's from Florida. I know that not all people from Florida up here are, na- are assholes, but... There's a lot of people who react the way Heather's describing that make the rest of you look bad. Let's just be honest. When they have a Florida tag, you can't help but be like, oh, yeah, okay. And so here I pull up, and this guy is out there at the gas pump just, I mean, basically cussing this poor girl out who works at the gas station. I mean, so much so that people are just looking like, what the hell, you know? So I go on inside. The store's packed because the line's backed up because she's been out there helping this guy. And uh, so he, she comes back in, finally starts clearing the line. Well, here comes this guy storming back in again. And, here, there, you know, there's a there's a good line. There's no way you can't miss this line. And he just walks up, like, literally almost bumps a lady away from the counter and is like, oh, I need to, you know, I need a receipt on this and this didn't do this. And I just spoke up. I said, hey, buddy, there's a line. And he looks around like, oh, oh like how dare anyone speak to me? And he's like, well, I was here first. I said, well, you wasn't in this fucking line, bud. And then a lot of people just are backing up and stuff because for some reason. The seas are parting. When I get mad, like people act like I'm going to go crazy. I don't know. You got a big head. People are probably afraid you're going to headbutt somebody. They think I'm going to start headbutting people just left and right. you're going to start ramming them like a little angry billy goat. (laughs) Okay, so I guess I am kind of a big enough guy and all and stuff. And I have a loud, booming voice. And so You've anyway, got them broad shoulders and you're a thick bitch. So yeah. yeah. So he's just like, well, and this guy's fat too. Okay. So this is what got me a little bit and I don't care. It's I'm kind of like Rox, uh, Roxanne, the dude from Roxanne with a big nose. You know, if you call me fat, I'm just like, Oh, that's the best you can do. But he's something like blah, blah, you, you fat ass. And I was like, well, this fat ass will slap the taste out of your fucking mouth, you and your buddy's mouth. So you both can go out there and wait on me. And this fuck now this dude's looking at me like, Oh sh-, you know, what's going on here? And, like, he finished cussing at the um, poor cashier and leaves and high steps it in his flip-flops back to his little forerunner and takes off. His little flip-flops were probably like... <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't outside waiting on me, uh, thank God. They never are. Because I really don't want to fight. And uh, the poor girl said, thank you. He had been literally cussing me for 15 minutes because he fucked up, like, the pay at the pump thing and wouldn't listen to her instructions to get it fixed. So, I mean, what gives you the right to treat this person like this i just don't get it i don't get the attitude i don't either here's another thing dylan stop assuming everything is for you statues are not to be climbed on by your kids historical monuments are not a jungle gym don't pee in the streets don't take off your shoes and try to swim in fountains yeah what is wrong with people oh my gosh when i lived in washington dc i would see this all the time Right? There's the World War II memorial. Really lovely. Like, they've done an excellent job with this memorial. Very nice. Uh, Big fountains. People taking off their damn shoes, putting their feet in the water. And this is, like, to honor 
fallen, uh, you know, folks who who fought and died in World War II, and we're we're gonna put our feet in a fountain. So you're not at Splash Country, right? This no. isn't this isn't a water park. No. I just no you're respect. You're at a war memorial, right? No respect. I mean, what what next? Are you going to, like, get a ladder and try to boost your kid up in Abe Lincoln's lap? <laughs> so uh, they can sit in his lap and have a photo? I'm sure people have tried to do that. I mean, come on. Some of this stuff I just think is common sense, but then maybe it's not. Now, the Lincoln Memorial, how big is that in person? It's pretty big. Is it really? It's pretty big. So, like, 20 feet up to his lap big? Yeah, probably. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you'd have to have something to come up there. Okay. Yeah. I got to go on a tour of D.C. You do. I want to see all the, oh my God, all the crazy architecture and symbols. Yeah, so you got to take me. If don't drunk pee in the streets. Whoa. Just like people go like to New Orleans and it's like you're having a great time and then people be pissing all in the streets. I've got to say, I love New Orleans. Don't piss in the streets. I loved going there. I enjoyed it. You know, uh, just the way the, the climate and the area. And uh, there's a lot of history, very great history tied up in that area and being close to the sea. But people use it like they're fucking trash dump toilet, like, and it's the tourist. I know it is. They just use it like I get to get blackout drunk and act like a total fucking asshole and piss on the side. And it and stinks. And on the sidewalk. And yeah. it's nasty. And it's this, you got this beautiful architecture, all these old, you know, French style buildings or whatever. And it and it's gross. Like when you get down there, walking in between all those buildings and stuff, and it's because of the asshole tourists. Paris, you'd think beautiful, romantic city, right? That is the pissiest, stinkiest city I've ever been to in my entire life. You're kidding me. And it's like, get, just get your shit together. Why are you pissing in the street? Go to the restroom. You got at least piss in the grass, people. I, now I've not been to Germany, but I have seen people. Taking selfies at concentration camps, and I just think that that is inappropriate. That's in poor taste. It is in poor taste. And uh, a lot of folks in Europe have a problem with this. I was reading some some different uh, people bitching about tourist web pages and shit, and I'm like, I get it. And that was like one of the top complaints, is to stop taking selfies at sites that honor victims. Now, I, I would say, on one hand, that maybe people shouldn't even have access to these sites just because they are so somber and such horrid things happen there. But I think it's okay to have a conversation or actually see with your own eyes what happened. But you certainly should respect what you're doing. This isn't a Ferris wheel. This isn't some kind of amusement ride. This is a very serious, you know, um, leftover thing from a uh, horrible events. And, and yeah, just like the memorials to war and things like that. Just have a little bit of respect about yourself. Motorcycles. Now, I know we've discussed traffic a little bit. Right uh, in this area, we have a lot of motorcycles. And they weave in and out of traffic. They speed around these curvy mountain roads, which is very, very dangerous. But then have the audacity to be like, watch out for me. <laughs> well, I, and I will watch out for you. But do not... Weave in and out of traffic and like cut, you know, cut me off and shit when you're on a motorcycle. Well, here's the thing. Like you should be more responsible for yourself. You're you, you know that you're and I, and I like motorcycles. I have uh, all kinds of friends that drive motorcycles. It's super cool. And I get why. We, People, I want to motorcycle. We want to get bikes ourselves. And, and we're not saying that. But you need to drive that motorcycle responsibly as well because you are on a vehicle that is inherently dangerous. Because of its design, you're open to everything. You're the one that's going to get fucked up if we hit, right? A few weeks ago, I'm on the parkway. It is a gray day, very cloudy, a lot of fog, rain. I'm driving as slow as possible, you know, obstructed vision up there because it is so foggy. And there were motorcycles just zooming by me, probably doing like 80 in the fog and like almost over in my lane. Riding like two at a, you know, two right beside each other, doing like eight. And I was like, "What are these people doing?" Well, that's the thing. You're this on is these. How uh, you drive off a mountain and die? You're on these curvy roads, and you're doing the speed. Uh, speed. Sometimes some people, you know, going way faster than the speed limit. Post. And if I look and then look the other way and glance back and don't see anything, I'm going to pull out like normal. But if you're doing freaking 70, 80, 90 miles an hour around these, you know, curvy roads, all of a sudden you're on top of me before I know it, right? 
And now it would be like, oh, I pulled out in front of you, when in reality, you were going way too fast. Here, here's another Fuck, one. who else are we going to get? Visiting an area, then making fun of the culture or the local color. That's disgusting. We have folks visit us here in the mountains, and the number one thing they do is make fun of our accents. Call us rednecks. Our dialect. Hillbillies. Hillbillies. Make rude comments like, I can't believe you have all your teeth, or wow, you wear shoes. Assuming that you're ignorant. Yeah. Right? And uh, instead of knowing the real hillbilly culture, I don't mind the word. It's just the way you're using it. I know that what you mean by that. Well, they mean it in a derogatory way. Right. I'm instead a, of a proud hillbilly. In- innovative, you know, um, resilient, um, hardworking, cunning, yeah, all these things. Um, the first person, a group of people back in the day, I don't know what's kind of happened to us now uh, in a, to a degree, that would uh, stand up for themselves no matter what, would do anything for their neighbors yep. and their community. Absolutely. Right? This is what a hillbilly uh, has been for, you know, generations. And then these people come here because they love the area. They love the quaint little town nestled in the mountains or whatever. And then, But then they want to change every fucking thing. Right? That's what they've done to Asheville. The music scene's been destroyed. The art scene is, uh, like, not half as cool as it used to be because it's like just i don't know generic trust fund kids or something you have artists like jonas gerard the uh, accused rapist yeah and people splashed all over the place with his like shitty fake pollock wannabe art i don't know and people still defending him even after he's been accused of rape he's disgusting yeah so the music scene is used to be so awesome in Asheville. you now could there's live, a noise ordinance now there's noise ordinance you you got people living in seven hundred thousand dollar apartments and condos downtown and they don't want to hear all that noise they don't want all the late night traffic so say goodbye to the night scene goodbye to the music scene used to in Asheville 10 years ago even you could go down there with no itinerary and just kick it Three or four bands. Walk Catch around. Three or four different bands. And you would hear different bars. Different music. It might be jazz. It might be New Orleans. It might be funk. It might be a jam band. It might be country. It might be punk. I mean, literally, all this different music going on and just find it. Or it might they might be performing in the square or, you know, any of that. And just have such a great time. And and now now everything shuts down at them ten, 10 or eleven o'clock and it's gotta be quiet. Because all these people spent all this money on these fucking old ass buildings and they've kidded themselves that they're actually valued at seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. And I wish they just all go fucking die. What? What? Gentrification's a bitch, y'all. It is. Okay, here's another one, Dylan. For all of my service workers, food service workers, they know what I'm talking about. Only eating touristy foods. So if you go into a restaurant and complain about the menu, you're a jerk. And if you want a safe bet, try McDonald's, right? But don't visit an area, go in, you're at the beach, go into a seafood restaurant and then complain that they don't have anything on the menu but seafood. Like, what are you doing? Okay. Okay. I was going to say you did that in Savannah, but you just couldn't believe there wasn't shrimp on the fucking menu everywhere you looked. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, like, cussing out the employees. No. I was just saying, I can't believe I can't find some, like, steamed shrimp someplace. That was odd to me. I just wanted, a, like, a pound, pound and a half for myself of steamed shrimp. And some cocktail sauce, and she would have been and happy. And a damn lemon, and I would have been happy as hell, but I could not find any. So it wasn't even really bitching about the menu. It was just like, man, where's the shrimp? And you certainly didn't go in a place and raise hell, because I would never do that. No. I mean, if you're visiting an area, be bold. Be willing to try something new. And don't complain if the five-star restaurant doesn't offer offer you some chicken tenders. <laughs> right? Y'all don't have macaroni for my kid who won't eat anything, but we still came to this five-star French, restaurant? French cuisine restaurant, and y'all don't have pizza, really? Yeah. What the fuck, dude? You're... Kid is the reason there's pizza and macaroni on the even the Chinese buffet, people. And you're going to the the whatever Happy Garden or whatever it's called, Shogun Buffet, and and you're mad because your kid won't even try anything. Like, why did you even bring that kid out, dude? Why didn't you just leave him at home and let me eat a cup of macaroni? A cup of macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like the shitty microwavable macaroni. That's what I'm talking about. With the powder and the, With like the powder, powder that keeps Ew. it activated or something. That's so weird. 
Oh my gosh! You know what? I feel like this is one of the most offen- uh, possibly offensive uh, episodes we've ever done. Well, because it probably is. Because the truth hurts. And if you're offended by it, then that means you're probably one of these people, right? It's true. And if you don't like it, turn it off. Well, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking loudly. Again, use a little etiquette. Inside voices shouldn't change just because you're in a new place. So don't argue with your family in the middle of the street. And if you're on the phone, be polite, especially when visiting certain areas. Because not everyone in a museum wants to hear about your bowel movement or your divorce. Yeah. Well, you told me it's uh, basically you don't want me to answer the phone like in the restaurant or anything. No, I think that's rude as fuck. You could just call. It drives me crazy when you do that. Well, I typically don't. To, oh yeah yeah uh, okay but that's a damn lie well I, and it aggravates me it's such bad manners dylan if you're sitting down in a restaurant especially you're with your wife man we're like having a meal don't answer the phone you're acting like i've took call all these calls and ignored you that's not the case no but you take calls and it's very rude no one you... to me and two to everybody else because people want to hear your conversation you pointed it out and i stopped doing it that's what really happened that's a damn lie <laughs> that's a damn truth you know what i'm gonna keep a tally <laughs> of, of the next times you do it and yeah, maybe you stopped, but it's only after three years of me telling you quit answering the damn phone when you're in a restaurant. Who the fuck are you supposed to be? I'm very important. Complaining about the weather. This is another one. Depending on the season, prepare for the temperatures, right? Don't go to Alaska and then be like, it's really cold out. <laughs> yeah, went to Alaska. What'd you expect? <laughs> right? So don't go to somewhere that typically is cold or hot and then complain about it being cold or hot. Are you going to go to the equator and then complain that it's hot? So you go to Chicago and you're like, it's so windy, my hair. Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm going to go to Forks, Washington because I'm a huge Twilight fan and then bitch about the rain? No. I'm not a Twilight fan, by the way. Is that why they live there? Because it rained all the time and they could stay out of the sun? Yeah. Holy shit. And I know this because our kids have watched those movies about a million times in the last year. Oh, my God. I don't know what it is, but these kids love that movie. I don't know why, but then you can't get them to sit down and watch Lost Boys with you. Yeah, I know, but they love Twilight. You tell me what kind of bullshit that is. Tip your server. Right? Back to restaurants. That's always true. Now, according to surveys, Dylan, men and millennials are the worst tippers. Hey, will you speak up for me on this one since you want to tear me down on the answering the phone at the table bullshit? I'm an excellent tipper. I'm an excellent. I'm a tip too much. (laughs) That's the truth. Oh my gosh. If you catch Dylan at the bar after he's had a couple of drinks, that he's making it rain on the bartender. Like not even kidding. Well, hey. Like, slow down, bro. We get the full service when we go. You can give her a tip, but you don't have to tip her like that. We get the full service when we go in our bar, though, don't we? Why are you sliding that guy $50? He gave you one beer. Well, it's not quite that far, but I will throw 30 or 40 bucks on top of my tab. Why not? You've been taking care of me all night, me and my friends. I, for some reason, like to buy everyone else drinks. I don't know. I just want everybody to have a good time. I enjoy talking to people. You just want to sit and look and drink with your friends. And it's true in the smoke, some. Yeah, but not inside. No, outside. I go to designated areas. Thank you. I don't even know why... You know, I can't even remember the times when restaurants and bars were like everybody's smoking in there because it really is gross. Like if I, I don't even smoke, smoke inside anywhere, right? And if I did, I would be like, that's really gross. Even if it's just me. Except for in your work car and it's so gross. Oh. The minute I get, like if I have to ride in your stanky, your stanky jungle work car, (laughs) um, it is so gross. And like I immediately get in there and start having like an allergy attack from all the cigarette smoke that's just sort of like seeped into the seats. It's permeated. (sighs) Oh, Dylan. You got anything else for us? Any other groups we can uh, attack at this point? But you know what the, the core of this is? You're the asshole. Right, you're coming to me. You're paying money to travel to our area, and you're fucking it up. Okay, when we go to other people's areas, we don't fuck it up. We try to enjoy it, the 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 pros of the area, and if we have some cons of the area, we just know that's just how life goes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no matter where you're traveling, whether it's uh, you know in the United States, you're traveling overseas, abroad, what have you. Going to a town two hours away on a little road trip, day trip. 
Have some manners. Use some common sense. You know, I saw this guy. He was like in, uh, shit, I don't know. He was somewhere, um, Kathmandu or something like that. Oh, yeah. Where the, he was like uh, reviewing the different places you could stay. And the guy was like, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, seven, eight bucks. Whatever their money was, it was thousands. But, the, you know, it was worth seven, eight bucks. And he talked him down to five. And I asked you, I was like, is that being a, because people in the comments are like, you're obviously not a, a world traveler or you would know that he did the right thing. But in my, my view, like, are you not being a cheap bastard and knowing that that couple bucks doesn't mean any, as much to you as it might these people? Or are those people, they're like, they'll just scam the next person. You know, it's like, then why are you even going and visiting there if they're all scammers and, and fucking assholes just trying to steal all your money? I don't get that mindset. If someone told me, yeah, it's 7 or $8 for the night for my uh, accommodations and I'm traveling, I would be like, hell yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, exactly. I would probably give them 10 right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm not... A, a culture. You just don't know because you're not a world traveler, Dylan. In, international traveler that you should fucking bargain people down as far as you're already paying do, bottom dollar prices. Why not save two more bucks? What? Oh, I scoff at this notion. Okay. You don't know how hard it was for me to get my parents to pay for this trip, Dylan. <laughs> my year abroad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, hey, this was a different kind of offbeat, but I felt it was important, Dylan. We should all be a little bit nicer, be a little bit more friendly, exercise good manners, and not be assholes. And this is, if you're visiting someone else's area, try, remember back to, uh, if you you can't contain yourselves or have basic manners, rem uh, refer back to Mountain Murder's Guide to Not Being an Asshole Tourist. Remember what Heather and I said this evening. And if you, uh, you can also just do this in your daily life. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. Right? Chill the fuck out. Right? Calm down. Eat an eddy. You're not a, you're likely if you not. you can't do that, then, you know, just like maybe, you know, do a little meditation. Get some more fiber in your diet. I don't know what to tell you. Drink some water. Breathe. <laughs> and just chill out. Take it easy. Yeah, gosh. Calm down. Yeah. Not everything has to be a race. You're not that important. You are not number one in the world. You're likely the not sun, a heart surgeon. Yeah. You're you're not the center of the universe, right? The sun's not revolving around you. If you're out of contact for 10, 15, 30 minutes, people likely will not die. I know there is people out there that depend on what they do, that they do need to be in contact constantly. Well, then constantly. they probably shouldn't be visiting on a vacation if their people will die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you're on call heart surgeon, you should be you should be at home chilling? You probably shouldn't be in the Alps skiing, okay? That's true. Right, exactly. Okay, so here's to, here's to hoping Brian Landry, Laundry, let's just call him an asshole. Let's hope he's caught soon, and I hope they catch him before... Um, there's many theories out there that his parents have helped him, that he's uh, already killed himself somewhere off the beaten trail, somewhere maybe in Florida or even up our way, and that he's already killed himself because he couldn't. I don't. I don't think he's going to go that route because he didn't have a problem driving across the country by himself, contemplating what he likely did to his fiance. Right? Yeah, you're right. And uh, he just seems like a coward, and whatever did happen. Um, he doesn't want to take responsibility for it. And we're making some assumptions, but, I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me that he killed his fiance, right? I think it's safe to say probably. So I hope they find his punk ass soon, and I hope they charge his parents. I agree. And I hope if he's somewhere being an asshole tourist, somebody punches him in his baby maker. Who? Okay. Right in the <laughs> cod. In the what? Cod. In the fish. Isn't that isn't that a cod fish? Isn't that a yeah yeah right? That doesn't make any sense. Well, that's why they call it a cod piece, dude. It used to be a reference to a man's junk, I think. We can't make it through one episode. I I said cod instead of dick because you were going to give me shit for saying dick. Can't make it through a single episode. You our next offbeat is going to be how Dylan can make it through a, an entire episode without mentioning 
his dick or someone else's dick. Oh, okay, it. dude. I was gonna say I didn't even mention mine. We're gonna wrap it up. Okay. People are tired of listening to us, bitch. Okay, thank Maybe you. They're trying to plan their next vacation so they can go be the most pleasant tourists on the planet. Oh my God! Imagine who listens to this episode of Offbeat on Vacation. Woo, bro. Yeah. What's up? Woo! Pull out the party liquor. That's true. All right. Until next time. Bye.